Good evening. Good to see everybody today. Welcome to worship and good to see the visitors that we have with us. You're always welcome at St. John's. If you'd like to check into St. John's as your church home, please be sure to let us know. All of our information is on the back side of the worship folder. We're, we're here to serve. This is also the service that goes out online and to the radio and on TV. And so, especially for those on the radio, I'm Pastor Timothy Miller, and I am the preacher and the one who is conducting the worship service today. And our organist is Professor Randy Bodie. We are focusing during these worship services on the weekends on our greatest needs. And we look at our greatest need today being life for the dead. Take what you learned from God's Word, take it home, apply it to your everyday life, and also discuss it with one another. Encourage each other with God's Word. With all of that in mind, let's open our worship as we sing hymn number 846 from the Blue Hymnal, I Know of a Sleep in Jesus' Name. stand. The liturgy we're following is a basic format of that which is setting one, page 154, in the front of the blue hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us.
Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Let us pray. Eternal God and Father, help us to remember Jesus, who obeyed your will and bore the cross for our salvation, that through his anguish, pain, and death, we may receive the forgiveness of sins, victory over the grave, and finally inherit eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. You remember our theme for today, and that is our greatest need. The one we're looking at today is life for the dead. Our first reading is from 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning with verse 17. God wants us to know that whoever believes in him will live, even though he dies. He enables here the prophet Elisha to prove that all of that to a grieving mother. But the woman conceived, and she gave birth to a son at that same time of year, just as Elisha said to her. The boy grew up, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. Then he said to his father, My head, my head. His father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. So he picked him up and carried him to his mother, and the boy sat on her lap until noon. Then he died. Then she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God. She shut the door behind her and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send one of the servants to me with one of the donkeys so that I can run to the man of God and come back. He said, Why are you going to him today? It's not the new moon and it's not the Sabbath. But she said, It's all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead the way. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So she went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her from a distance, he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, that's the woman from Shunem. Now run to meet her and say, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your son all right? She answered, We're all right. Then she came to the man of God at the mountain, and she grasped his feet. Gehazi stepped forward to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone for her soul is in distress. But the Lord has hidden it from me. He has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Didn't I say, Don't give me false hope? Then Elijah said to Gehazi, Hike up your garments for travel, and take my staff in your hand and go. If you meet someone, do not greet him, and if someone greets you, do not answer. Put my staff on the boy's face. But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went ahead of them and put the staff on the boy's face. But there was no sound and there was no response. So he went back to Elisha and told him the boy did not wake up. When Elisha came to the house, there the boy was, dead, lying on his bed. So he went in and he shut the door behind the two of them. Then he prayed to the Lord. 
He got up and lay down on top of the boy. He put his mouth to the boy's mouth, his eyes to the boy's eyes, his palms to the boy's palms. Then he bent down over him, and the boy's flesh became warm. He went back into the house and paced back and forth. Then he went up and bent down over him, and the boy sneezed seven times. Then the boy opened his eyes. Then Elisha called Gehazi and said, Call the woman of Shunem. So he called her, and she came in. He said, Pick up your son. So she came in and fell at Elisha's feet and bowed down to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. The word of the Lord. Together we sing hymn number 810, the first song of Isaiah.
The second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 11. We remember again the theme that there is life for the dead. Here the Father promises to raise his children from the dead. He has made us heirs of everlasting glory. And if the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will also make your mortal bodies alive through his Spirit who is dwelling in you. So then, brothers, we do not owe it to the sinful flesh to live in harmony with it. For if you live in harmony with the sinful flesh, you are going to die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the actions of the body, you will live. Indeed, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery, slavery so that you are afraid again, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we call out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself joins our spirit in testifying that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, we are also heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. For I conclude that our sufferings at the present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us. In fact, creation is waiting with eager longing for the sons of God to be revealed. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the holy gospel. resurrection and the life, those who believe in me will live even though they die. The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel of St. John, the 14th chapter beginning with verse 1 and serves as the sermon text. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know where I am going and you know the way. Lord, we don't know where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We ask you to fill out one of the white attendance guest cards. Those online can use the link or the QR code. Helps us to get to know everybody better, to get to know our guests as well, and also to encourage God's people in their worship life. We sing now hymn number 50, 544, I Am the Bread of Life. Right after that will be the children's devotion. Maybe when I get up and I come into the middle, the children can come forward for the children's devotion. We were going to have the mixed choir with the recording help us with this one, but the, we had a little trouble with the recording. And so we'll sing it uh, according to the organist uh, playing it. And we're going to sing now hymn number 544, a newer hymn, I Am the Bread of Life.
Good evening. Good to see you today. Today, you know, we had a funeral at church. The funeral was for a sister in Jesus, our sister in Jesus, Judy Cole. And God comforted our hearts as we're troubled when a loved one dies. I want to talk to you about a different funeral. And this funeral was one of a lady as well. And, you know, when we have a funeral, we have the casket right there, in fact. And it's open usually for a visitation as people come in to encourage and comfort each other. And then when the service begins, that's usually when the casket is closed. And with this particular funeral that I'm thinking of, the casket was closed and the pastor put something on the top of the casket. And when the people looked, they saw a fork on the top of the casket, right? That's right, what? And so they wondered, what about that fork on the casket? What is that all about? So then when the pastor was preaching, he explained it. And I have a fork here, and I have a plate, and so we're going to take a break from the story of the funeral, and we're going to go to get-togethers that families have. And families have great get-togethers, and they have good food, like during Thanksgiving, you have turkey and gravy and mashed potatoes, and mmm, so good. And you have also special meals when you have Easter and Christmas, and and. My wife, she's a really good cook, and when she makes something, it's really good, and I just, I just eat it up. I just, mmm. And then when all, all of the food is gone on the plates, you usually hear somebody say, keep your fork, keep your fork. So eat all the food for the main meal. Why would somebody say, keep your fork? Why? Oh, there you go. It's for the dessert, you see, because that's really good and yummy. And my wife makes these gooey desserts. I just love them. And people will say, keep your fork, because you know why? The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So that lady who had her pastor put a fork on the casket, she wanted to remind everybody that after this life, for those who believe, what is there? Heaven. The best is yet to come, right? And that's through Jesus, our Savior. And so she, as she believed in Jesus as her Savior, who had suffered and died for her and paid for her sins, she knew that when she died, she was going to go to heaven. And that's the best place of all. Better than anywhere here on this earth. And so God has given us that through Jesus our Savior. So I want you to remember that story so that every time you're eating a meal and you have a fork, you know, and you got your fork there, and maybe somebody says, keep your fork, and you're thinking of the dessert coming, think of also what? What's coming? What's coming after? We're coming, and that dessert is heaven. Right. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the comfort that you give our troubled souls. You give us the comfort of heaven as our home. You went to prepare that place for us, and you will come again and take us to be where you are. Teach us more about that, dear Lord, as we continue to worship in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you can go back to your pew and worship God with us. And it's hymn number, thank you, thank you. Hymn number 836, verses 1, 4, and 5.
Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, home sweet home. When you think about home, you may be thinking about a place where you should be able to relax, a warm and caring place where family members encourage one another. It should be a place where you are able to find some rest, a place where you are able to rejuvenate. You do different things to your home in order to make it that warm place to be. Maybe you have different family pictures up on the walls to remember your loved ones. Maybe you have seasonal decorations. and You change those every so often. There are different ways that people look to make their home a home. A place where you feel good. But you know as well as I do, that it's not always perfect, is it? You'd like it to be ideal, but you know that there are problems that enter into the home. Maybe there is a relationship problem. Maybe what comes into the home is sickness, and that causes various problems. You realize it's not a perfect place. Maybe death comes into the home. And your heart is so troubled because it's not what you wanted it to be. You have this picture of a home, and then it's not that. And you know, if you're thinking that you're going to find your home, your permanent home here, you're going to be disappointed because there's a far greater home. And Jesus talks to us about that home, the home, the home that we're waiting for. You see, as God's people, we're just travelers here. We're on our way. We're on our way to where Jesus told us that he prepares a place for us. And so today, as we are talking about life for the dead, Jesus comforts our troubled hearts. And he comforts our troubled hearts as he reminds us that heaven is our home, and then he wants us to be very sure the way to get there. And so he tells us the only way to our heavenly home. Because sometimes there's the temptation to attach ourselves to this world, we find our hearts troubled. Now, there are a lot of things that trouble us. But if we get connected and glued to this world, we're going to have all kinds of trouble because life here does have its disappointing times. Jesus, though, promises that he's going to work everything for our good and for our eternal good. Oh, that's a promise of God, that he's going to work everything so that it all works for good for us to get closer to him, to trust in him, to stay with him, and to have eternal life with him in heaven. Now the disciples' hearts were troubled. They were troubled because Jesus was talking about separation. Jesus was telling them, especially as he got close to his death on the cross, that he was going to leave them and they couldn't come with him yet. Not yet, but you will follow me someday. You can imagine how they felt. They followed Jesus. They were with him for those three years. They had left family and friends and their jobs, and they followed Jesus. They saw him as their Lord, their God, their friend, their Savior. And so they were shocked when Jesus, every time he talked about how he was going to leave them, and of course Jesus was talking about his sufferings and death, his resurrection, and then his ascension into heaven 40 days later. And he saw that their hearts were troubled. And our hearts are troubled too when there's separation, when somebody we dearly love dies. And so as he comforts the disciples here, he's comforting us. And he's comforting us with such wonderful comfort that he only can give as he points us to our heavenly home. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. 
believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. Who's Jesus talking about that he's preparing a place for? He's talking about his disciples. He's talking about all those who believe in him and trust in him. He's talking about his disciples at that time and his disciples today and his disciples into the future. What does that tell us? That tells us that when we die, we will live in our heavenly home with Jesus and with all those who have died in the Lord. Wow, what a happy and wonderful reunion that is going to be. And, and that home is perfect. There is nothing that is going to mar our eternal lives in heaven. It is with our perfect Lord God in a perfect place with perfect bliss. And Jesus continues and he says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am, where he is. Again, who is it that he is going to come back for? Those who believe. Remember he said, believe in God, believe also in me. And now he's saying that he's going to come back and take those who are his to himself in heaven. And when we're there, we will have everything we need. Perfectly supplied and blessed by our Lord God. When you hear our Lord God teach us about heaven, our heavenly home, many times he tells us what is not there. There is no way that he can fully explain it. It is just that wonderful. No human words can fully describe heaven. And so when he tells us what's not there, oh, that leads us to want to be there. Listen to this from Revelation chapter 21. And from the throne I heard a loud voice that said, Look, God's dwelling is with people. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. No more tears of sorrow and pain. There will be no more death. No death to cause us such grief. There will be no more sorrow or crying or pain because the former things have passed away. Did you hear what God said as the first blessing being in heaven? Being with him. See, the opposite is being abandoned by God. That's hell. That's what we deserve. But because of Jesus who was abandoned in our place, we will never be abandoned through Christ. We will someday be in his full glory. Wow. There's no way we can fully imagine that. And so, it is so important for us to stay close to God. And the way to stay close to God and our Savior is through the power of his word. Like right now. We want to continue to believe and to trust every single promise our Lord God has given to us. You know, children, especially young children, they trust their parents. With a childlike trust, that's the kind of trust we want to have in the promises of God, in this promise here, that he's coming back to take us to be with him. A childlike trust in God's word. So our Lord has strengthened us. He has comforted our, our troubled hearts by reminding us of our heavenly home that's waiting for us, that he has prepared for us. And he wants us to know the way. He doesn't want us confused about the way. You know, when a child gets lost, there's turmoil. Turmoil in the heart of the child and turmoil with the parents. We don't want to be lost. We always want to be close to our Savior. The, Disciples of Jesus, they found themselves at times lost. There were times where they indicated that they thought Jesus was going to make his kingdom here on this earth. Lord, are you now going to establish your kingdom? They thought that he was going to make a heaven here on this earth. But Jesus had been teaching them all along that that's not the case. That his kingdom is not 
of this world, and they got lost at times because they got distracted. They got distracted and they began to pay attention to other things rather than focusing on Christ and his word. And so we want to focus on Christ. There are so many out there who are looking and looking and looking. They know deep down this is not it. Deep down they know that. They look and they see the the pain and the turmoil and the violence and all the different things as a result of sin that's here and how quickly people die and some die so young. They know that this isn't it. And so they're looking, looking, looking. And Jesus is the one who tells them that he's the one. And we have the privilege of sharing that with them, that Jesus points us to our heavenly home, and it only comes through Christ. This is what Jesus said when Thomas said, we don't know the way. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. There it is, except through him. See, there was a canyon, a gulf between God and us barrier. And that barrier was sin. There was no way we could get to God. But Jesus paved the way. He made the bridge. He made the bridge. Each step of that bridge, he made it as he kept every single commandment. Every step that he made was a perfect one, keeping God's commandments in thought, in word, and deed. And then, in regard to our sin, He suffered and died and paid for all of those sins. And that bridge was complete. Jesus cried it out. It is finished. And then the Holy Spirit came through the power of the gospel in word and sacrament and gave us what we needed, faith. Through faith, we are with God. And someday we will be with him in his eternal presence says in Scripture here, no one comes to the Father except through me, through Jesus. Trust in your Savior always. He is the only way. Home, sweet home. What are we talking about now? Are we talking about that home that we have where we put up pictures on the wall? Wonderful to have, but you know, that's not our home. Our home. The home is our heavenly home. That's the comfort God has given to our troubled hearts. Home sweet home. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith in the one true God who gives us that home, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As the offering baskets go around, you can place in there also your attendance guest card. As they're brought forward, we dedicate all the offerings to God, those given here, those given online, those dropped off or sent in. We do that because of all that God has done for us, given life to the dead. We sing as we give our offerings, Children of the Heavenly Father, hymn number 502.
stand. As we go to our Lord in prayer, we pray for Judy Seeley and Arlene Simon who were hospitalized. We also pray for the family of Judith Coles. As you heard, the Lord has taken her home to heaven and her funeral was today. We pray. Dear gracious Savior, thank you for comforting our troubled hearts today with the message of our true and eternal home being in heaven. Thank you for preparing a place for us by being obedient to your plan to your death on the cross. Thank you for preparing a place for us by going to the cross and dying to pay for our sins. We look forward to our heavenly home, which comes only through you, the way, the truth, and the life. By your resurrection, we know we have life, and heaven is our home. Dear Lord, we come to you as our sisters in faith, Judy Seely and Arlene Simon, were hospitalized. Help them and strengthen them in body and soul. Please make them well again and grant rest and refreshment for their bodies. Cause us always to dwell on the message of your suffering and death on the cross. And through it, comfort us all with the forgiveness of our sins. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we turn to you and we praise your holy name for taking Judy Coles to her heavenly and perfect home. You promised, and so you have fulfilled. May the family and all of us be comforted by the victory over death guaranteed to us by your own son's resurrection from the dead. Remind us all of your promises to be with us and to work all for our good. Console and comfort those who grieve and lead them and us to number our days and be prepared through Christ our Savior. In your name, dear Savior, we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We close our worship with hymn number 930, verses 1 and 2. Go, my children, with my blessing.
Once again, so good to see all of you. What a blessing we have as we get together for worship. Tomorrow, during our Bible class, which is in between services, we also have refreshments. But for our Bible class, we'll be starting a new one, Proclaiming the Gospel. We'll learn more about sharing the gospel with others. And so you are invited to that Bible study, which is beginning that theme. If you could go to the next slide uh, up there. There you go. Uh, we welcome Holly Westermeyer as a new member of the congregation. She'll be here tomorrow morning at 745. We like to inform everyone so they know the new members. We called Jonathan Gulke to be our teacher of grade 6 and also athletic director. And we have a letter here from him. He writes, Dear St. John's School and church family, I am very excited about this opportunity that God has placed before me. I ask for your prayers as I deliberate this call placed before me and guidance from our beloved Lord to bring me to a decision. May God bless all of us over these next weeks as we look forward for a decision on this blessed opportunity. May God bless you all and thank you. Again, he's been called for grade six an athletic director. And then Monica Quinnett, who is Pastor Quinnett's wife, has been called for a halftime call for one year as an early childhood ministry teacher. And she has a letter here. Dear members of St. John, on Monday, March 20th, the Lord led our congregation to extend a divine call to me to be an early childhood ministry teacher. I am humbled by the opportunity to prayerfully consider where the Lord wants me to use my gifts and abilities to teach more lambs about him. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I tell you, whoever will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the little children in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Mark chapter 10. On Sunday, March 19th, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Akachi also extended a call to me to be their 4K preschool teacher. I ask that you keep both St. John's and Holy Trinity along with me and my family in your prayers as I deliberate where the Lord wants me to serve. Romans 12 reminds us, So in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Your sister in Christ, Mrs. Monica Quinette. Also called is Hannah Ewart, and you might be thinking she already has a call. Well, we're making that permanent, a permanent halftime call. We've called her for a permanent position as an early childhood ministry teacher as well, and she has a letter. Dear members of St. John's Lutheran, greetings in the name of the Lord, our best friend and a shield for those who take refuge in him. I received your call on March 21st to continue in early childhood ministry at St. John's. What a blessing it's been to be a part of the faculty family at St. John's and to be reminded daily of what I need to hear as I tell the children about the goodness of our God and his love for us. I am very grateful for being given this opportunity. I will prayerfully consider it and will let you know soon. In his peace, Hannah Ewart. We also have good news in regard to Rachel Weiss. You know that she had a call. She declined that call and is staying with us. Of course, this Wednesday, we have services. It's next Wednesday, 3.30 and 7, as usual. However, this is the last Wednesday. We'll have those midweek Lenten services because next week is already Palm Sunday. There's a meal, by the way, in between those services, and we continue to look for ushers to sign up for those special services. I'm looking, I don't see anything. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. God be with you all. Thank you so much.